Good morning and welcome to our worship on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, please do be seated for a moment or two. Today our worship focuses largely on the Blessed Virgin Mary, one of our two patron saints here. So we began December with St Nicholas and head towards the end with St Mary as well. Um, today is also a celebration of another kind. On the 20th of December 1970, Mr. Chris Savage became the Reverend Chris Savage, having been ordained deacon in Southwark Cathedral. So today we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Chris's ordination uh, as deacon. And so Chris will be our preacher today, so we may hear, may hear more about that later on, we'll find out. Um, before we continue with the service, a few things about the rest of this week. Places for our service on Christmas morning have now been allocated. Um, if you ask for a place and haven't heard from me in the last two days, please let me know. Um, hopefully you have. Um, equally, if your plans have changed since yesterday and you need to change plans here, also let me know and we'll try and uh, smooth out those wrinkles um, as quickly as we can. There will be Holy Communion on Wednesday this week at 10 o'clock and also on Sunday next week at 10.45, Sung Eucharist. Um, in addition to those real services, um, our two choirs will be recording this afternoon the final touches to the carol service. That will go online on Christmas Eve, as will the family crib service at around 4 o'clock. So various things coming up either here or online during the week. Would you please stand again for our greeting? Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we light the fourth of our Advent candles. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please sit for our first reading? Of Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, 
But the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the choir will sing for us an Advent lullaby by John Bell.
Please stand to greet the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
revelation of God can lead to action. That was achieved under the leadership of Brother Michael Schultz, the charismatic leader of the community. At the end of the Second World War, he felt there needed to be a wide ranging evangelical community based on young people who could reflect on the on the present and the past and have a vision of the future. The terrific experience of being in this community was undergirded by communal worship over the hall, hence the table chance. Thousands of young people arrived and stayed in tents and still do today, not only young people, but people of all ages. But perhaps the greatest influence on my faith and ministry among so many, from whom I have been blessed and humbled by what I have received from them, is Bishop David Jenkins. I first came across David at a conference in Manchester when he gave an incredibly challenging paper on the theology and organization of the National Health Service in the late 1970s. He will be remembered for his consistent and fiery opposition to the Thatcher government's economic policies, particularly regarding the then mining strike. David was always full of. He didn't wait for his concentration of the Bishop of Durham to publicly cast out on the authenticity of the Virgin Birth stories in Matthew and Luke. He did this every advent and incurred the wrath of evangelicals and the right of the impress, particularly the Daily Telegraph. He realized the amount of opposition he would encounter, but he passionately believed, as a believer and an academic, that faith was born out of faithful knowledge rather than the shadow traditions of the heart. He listened and all of Christ's teaching. He 
Thank you, Chris. And it's not our normal practice, but I think after 50 years of faithful ministry, our preacher deserves a round of applause. Would you please stand now for the affirmation of faith? Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we sit again as the choir sing for us Mary's Magnificat by Andrew Carter.
and we remain seated for our prayers. Our God is always ready to hear our prayers. Let us be still and pray to him now. Father God, we praise you for the season of Advent, for its mood of expectation and hope, and its spirit of confidence and preparation as we look to the word becoming flesh. Holy Lord, keep your church ever watchful, prepared for the call to new service, and greater witness. We give thanks and praise for those who celebrate today their years of service and dedication in your name and ask your blessing upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless, guide and strengthen Elizabeth, our Queen, and the royal family. May the leaders of this nation and of all nations be drawn increasingly to understand God's ways of justice and righteousness and be filled with the longing to do what is right, honest and good. As we pray for peace in our world, for, for an end to division and discord, hatred and hostility, death and destruction. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, as we prepare, wait and watch in your saving presence, may our homes be places of welcome, love and harmony. Be present in our community, places of work, centres of learning and health care. In our constantly changing world, with its shifting values, Root us deeply in your unchanging nature of mercy, goodness, faithfulness, and love. God of wholeness, reassurance, and healing, we bring before you families and individuals in special need. For those who are anxiously awaiting for the results of tests or for treatment, and those who are troubled in mind, body, and spirit. We remember those who are frail and fearful, who are weary and weak, for carers at home, for young carers and those who offer support. Bring freedom to those who are imprisoned by hate or guilt and a change of heart to all who need to forgive. May your blessing rest upon each one, for in you is hope, healing and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as we watch and wait for your coming in glory, preserve us at the hour of our death. As we pray for the recently departed and those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. May your holy angels carry the faithfully departed to your eternal home. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Mary and St. Nicholas and all the heavenly hosts, grant that through this season and beyond, we shall be renewed in hope, strengthened in faith, trusting more completely in the future you hold and filled with your boundless love as we prepare ourselves for the time when Christ comes again in glory. Amen. And let us say together the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Let us stand now to seek God's blessing. May God the Father, judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. May God the Son, coming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen.